In this series, we'll be making a full stack application. We'll start off by making a Node.js server, and we'll learn how to use TypeScript, how to scale the server across multiple cores and instances, and how to secure the server with private networks and gateways to connect to our databases. We'll then make a web front end to connect to our API and build a basic user authentication system so that we can take this and turn it into any app that we choose. We'll also learn how to host and manage the instances for scaling based on the load of our server. Once we've done this, we'll probably be making an app, either with React Native or Swift or both, and continue going over connecting to our API, validating the connection from the app to the server and managing the user authentication. Throughout this series, we'll be using common practices and modern languages that are used in 2023. I hope you learn a thing or two, and also I've set up a Discord server for developers, whether you're writing your first line of code or if you're really advanced, you can come in and be part of a community that can help you grow and improve in all aspects of your development career. Without further ado, let's get started. In this lesson, we'll be setting up the base of our Node.js server. So there's a couple of things I want to mention before we get started. One is the node version that I'm using, and then the NPM version that I'm using. And secondly is this code editor. So normally I'm a VS Code user, but recently I've been trying out Zed. And Zed is a new editor, which is currently in beta. And it basically, it's really fast and I really enjoy it. Um, I'm pretty sure it's only available for Mac users, um, but obviously the code editor is just your choice. You can use whatever you want. Um, what's nice about this is that it has an AI assistant built into it. So I can speak to OpenAI directly on the sidebar. Um, which is just quite a nice little gimmick. I, I've only used it recently and I'm just going to try it out for this series and see how I get along with it. Um, whether I go back to VS Code or not, who knows, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, another thing is that I'm going to be using uh, PMPM to install things. Uh, this is much nicer than NPM. It basically just installs things in a global directory so that when you want to reinstall a package that you've installed previously, instead of downloading it again, it can just pull from that um, sort of directory that it stores it on your local machine. Okay, so let's get started. As you can see, we have an empty directory here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do pmpm init to initialize a package.json within the directory. And this will just put in some boilerplate stuff here. Next thing we want to do is we want to install express. So if we do pmpm install, or we can just type in i for short, express, this is going to install the express package into our dependencies. So you can see here we're using 4.18, which is the latest one to date. Next we want to do is we want to create a index.js file. And this will just be where we're going to be putting in the main server code, which we're going to use to run the Node.js server. So we're going to use express. And how we do that is we just write in const express equals require express. And also I'm using Copilot, which is why I'm getting these sort of um, autocomplete. Um, so yeah. If you're ever wondering why these show up, that, that's Copilot there doing its job. Um, so the next thing you want to do, as it suggests here, is we want to write app equals express. And this is going to make an initialized express instant. And then we want to put in a dummy root. So we'll just put in hello world. And then we'll want to listen on port 3000. And we'll just console log the server is listening on port 3000. Okay, so that's done. Uh, that's as simple as it is to make a Node.js uh, server. And then how do we run this? So if we go into the terminal and we just run node index.js, it will start on server port 3000. And then if we go back to Chrome and then refresh on port 3000, you see we have this hello world. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the package.json and we're going to add a script so that we can run this. So just create a start script and we just say that node index.js that we did then when we do pmpm start it will run that uh run this bit of code here and it will start listening on port 3000 and everything works the same great so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this javascript file and we're going to turn it into a typescript file now the reason i use typescript over JavaScript is because, well, I like to think of TypeScript as a tool on top of JavaScript. So rather than its own language, I like to think of it as a tool. JavaScript is the language and you will be writing JavaScript, but you're adding additional tools, which in this case is types, which help catch errors in your code early on in the development process. So say if you're writing something and it's expecting a string and you're passing it a Boolean, that will eventually in a production environment, error, crash the server, 
It may take you an hour or so to figure out what the issue is, and then you push the fix. With TypeScript, this is caught way earlier on in the development process because the IDE can actually read the TypeScript config and be like, hold on, this is expecting a string here, but you're passing it a boolean, you should probably change that. And there's a lot of other reasons to use TypeScript, but that's just the main one, and I think that once you start using TypeScript, it's really hard to go back to using plain JavaScript. So how do we convert this into a TypeScript file? Well, first thing we want to do is install TypeScript. So if we do pmpm i dash d to install into the dev dependencies, TypeScript, then it's going to install TypeScript into our package.json. And if we open package.json, you can see that we're using TypeScript version 5.1. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is just convert this into a TypeScript file. So what I want to do is I'm going to create a new folder and call it source. And then I'm just going to drag this into the source and rename this index.ts. So now that we have that, if we try to run node index.js, it's going to error, right? Because we don't have this index.js anymore, but we do still want this index.js. So what we need to do is we then need to convert this TypeScript file into a JavaScript file. And how we do that is we use the TypeScript compiler. So first off, what we want to do is we run mpx tsc dash dash init. Now what this is going to do is it's going to create a TypeScript config file, and this will be filled with all of the options that TypeScript give you to convert your TypeScript into JavaScript. We're going to leave everything the same, but we do want to uncomment the out directory. So if we just find the out directory option, and we're just going to uncomment this, then we're going to change this to forward slash dist. So what this does is that when we compile our JavaScript, instead of it compiling it into the same uh, root as the file is, we're basically going to move everything into a source directory. And this way we can point all of our scripts towards that compiled JavaScript. So now if we run TSC, you'll notice that it's not going to work as we expect it. It's going to error, command TSC not found. And that's because we installed the TypeScript dependency on our dev dependencies and not globally on our machine. So what we want to do is we want to run this from the scripts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a build command and I'm going to make it run that TSC command. Now when I do pmpm build, it's going to build into the dist here. But what you notice is that it's erroring with a bunch of stuff. You can't find require, parameter, request is explicitly in any type. So we're going to go through these. So first of all, what we want to do is we want to change this from a require to an import. So we want to import express from express. Now you see this underline here. What it's saying is that it doesn't have the declaration file. Now what this means is that some MBM packages will have this by default, but some won't. And that's because they were probably made before TypeScript was really used that much. And therefore, most people use this with just JavaScript and they don't want to add the type declaration into the package and add much more um, file size to the npm module. So what we want to do is we want to install the type declarations, which will add types onto this package so that all of the things can be inferred from this package or from the types package, e.g. the request, the, re the response. These will all be inferred once we install these types. So how do we install types? Well, we just do pmpm i d because we want to install them into the dev dependency because they're only used at the dev runtime. And we want to do at types slash express to install the express types. And you can see if, the, if we hover over this, it will even tell you this right here. We're also going to install at types node because we're running Node.js and this will give us some default types to run on. So once we've installed these, it may take a couple minutes just to refresh the TypeScript server locally. But you see that these underlines will be removed and now we have types inferred. This request underline here is just because we're not actually using this variable within this function. What you can do is you can use an underscore, but we're going to just use this request and we're just going to ignore this for now as it's only a warning because we're most likely going to use this later on. So now that we have this, we've got rid of all of the errors. So now when we run pmpm build, it will successfully build and run into the index.js file and now you can see here, we're using the compiled JavaScript here. So what we want to do is we want to update our package.json to run instead of node index.js, we just do run node dist index.js, like so. Now if we run pmpm build, 
I mean PMPM start, sorry. You can see that the index is now running as expected from the disk folder. Cool. So when we make edits to TypeScript, we don't really want to have to continuing, uh, continuously have to cancel the server, run PMPM build, build the changes, start the server again. We kind of want that to happen all naturally for us. So what I would like to use here is a npm package called concurrently. So if we do pmpm i slash d concurrently like this, and what this allows us to do is it allows us to run multiple commands concurrently next to each other. So the first command that we want to run, so I'm going to make a dev, and you can see that it's already popped in here from Copilot. So what we're doing is we're just running concurrently, and then we're running the TSC command with the dash W for watch, and this will watch for changes within our TypeScript and automatically run and compile it. Then we're going to be calling node one, and node one listens for changes in the JavaScript and reruns the server, and we're going to be running this on the dist slash index.js. Now, we need to also install this node one package. So let's do pmpm i dash d node one and that will install node1 into our package dependencies here. Okay, so now that that's happened, um, well, actually, I think that because we made changes here and then installed a package, if I try to save this, it's gonna ask if I want to overwrite this. So I'm gonna overwrite it and then just install this node1 package again, like so. Okay, so now you can see that we have node1 in here. And now if we run this dev script, so if we do, pmpm dev then what it's doing is it's basically compiling it in watch mode and it's listening for changes and on changes it's restarting the server so what this means is if we go into index.ts and we look at the server currently it says hello world if we then change this to hello world plus typescript like so then it's going to recompile and restart the server so when i come back here and refresh it's been updated perfect to conclude what we did in this lesson, we first made an index.js file which ran on Node.js server. We then learned how to convert this into TypeScript and why we should even use TypeScript in the first place. In the next lesson, we're going to introduce Docker, which will allow us to create a container for our application, which we can use in development to install with the database of choice, and also set up an environment which will be the same no matter where we run it on. This is handy if we're distributing it to a Linux server or if we have multiple developers working on the project. We want to make sure the environment that they're working in is the same. We're also going to be finishing up the base of our server, neatening up the roots, and we're going to be introducing clusters to the Node.js. We're going to be using clusters to make sure that we run our Node server across all of the cores on our CPU. Node.js is naturally a single threaded application, so to make the most of the language, we want to make sure that we're running this across all of our cores available to us on the CPU.